Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come into God's presence to give thanks to him for all his blessings, we first confess our sins, including our many instances of ingratitude. We do so pleading for God's abundant mercy in Christ our Savior. Heavenly Father, we have been so richly blessed by you. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming into the world to be our Savior. Yet you so often forget the agony you suffered on our behalf, and how you willingly took the punishment of our sins upon yourself to give us forgiveness in life. Forgive us, O Lord. Holy Spirit, you have called us to faith in Jesus and have continued the work in our hearts and lives to mold us into the people you have called us to be. Through the mercy and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus, we have gained access to the grace of God. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, and by the command of Christ and the power of his cross, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. And you may be seated for the next hymn. Testament reading for tonight from the book of Job, chapter 1. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabaeans attacked and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword. I'm the only one who's escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants 
and I am the only one who's escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who's escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead. And I am the only one who's escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. And the psalmody is read responsive. Notice that the women read sometimes and the men read sometimes and so on. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they fall. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Extol the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates, and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders, and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. He has revealed his word to Jacob his laws and decrees to Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth, and forevermore. And now the choir will sing an anthem, Blessed Be Your Name.
thank the choir. They always do a nice job. Very nice. The epistle reading for tonight from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. And then the Holy Gospel from Luke chapter 18. A certain ruler asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I've kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Jesus replied, what is impossible with men is possible with God. This is the word of our Lord. And grace to you and peace from God our Father, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, we're going to start the sermon differently than we normally do. It's kind of nice when we have just one service and we get people from all three services together, right? You don't see some people otherwise, but now we've got a time to do that. So here's going to be a time where one goal is simply that you get to know some of the people around you. But then the second goal is this. I'm going to ask you to do this. I want you to answer a question. And I want you to talk about it among the people sitting next to you. And I don't just mean those people in your own family. That's good. That's good. But even some more people, okay? And I'm not going to come and find out what you're doing. Just do it on your own, okay? (laughs) You're old enough to handle this, okay? But I want you to talk just briefly. I'm I'm talking, this is going to be two to three minutes. That's all it's going to be, okay? (laughs) About this. I want you to think about a person who is quite well off, who is got a comfortable life, who's healthy, who's got a good job, nice family, things are going very, very well for them, at least from an outward perspective, okay, just going very well. And then on the other hand, I want you to think about someone who's struggling, who's got great difficulties, maybe who's got health issues, maybe who's got problems in the family, maybe who's uh, maybe unemployed, just one problem after another. Okay, so think about those two kinds of people. And then ask this question. This is, the, this is what I want you to talk about. You're going to answer this question, and after you're done talking, I'm going to ask for a show of hands, okay? But I want you to talk about it a little bit and think it through a little bit. Which of those two persons, the guy who's doing quite well, the guy who's not doing so well, or the woman who's doing quite well, the woman who's not doing very well, which of those two would have the harder time being thankful? Which has the harder time being a thankful person? Okay? Go for it. You got three minutes. <laughs> Introduce yourself if you don't know each other. Introduce yourself, okay? Do it. Who would have a harder time? The one who's doing well or the one who's. You're both going to. What's that? Which one would you answer? Which one would you answer? Would have a harder time, harder time being thankful. Why do you say that? Okay, what do you say?
Okay, time's up. Unless you want the church service to go long. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> okay, so we got the two different people. How, I'm gonna ask you now, I'm gonna ask you who has the harder time? The person who's got things going well and pretty comfortable life or the person who's got great difficulty and problems galore, okay? So which would have the hardest time? How many of you would answer that the person who's comfortable and doing well has the harder time? Raise your hand. Higher, so I can see. All right. How many of you would say that a person who's really struggling and having a difficult time then has a harder time saying thank you? Okay. You guys kind of thought, you did what I kind of expected was going to be the case, okay? But here, think about it, okay? Why would a person who has a lot, who's got a comfortable lifestyle, why would they have difficulty saying thank you, okay? What would some of you say? Why would they have difficulty saying thank you? They did it themselves? Too proud? too dependent upon themselves and the, and the things and stuff like that. So they'd have a hard time being a thankful person because basically everything is fine, okay? Those of you that said a person who is having a difficult life, why would they have a difficult time being thankful? Mad at God, God. that's the first one that I would answer. Blame problems, Blame problems on others, exactly. Not it's not fair. Why is this happening to me? Bitterness, disappointment, right? All those kinds of things can make someone very unthankful. I didn't give you a third choice. <laughs> and I did that intentionally, obviously. Um, but the third choice would have been, could both of them have a hard time being thankful? That's really what you're gonna, now, and that's the point. That's the point. But the point is going to be, why? Why? Here's Thanksgiving, and we're talking about how easy it is to be unthankful. We're talking about how hard it is to be thankful. How hard it is to be thankful when you got a lot. How hard it is to be thankful when you got nothing. Why is thankfulness such a hard, hard thing? Okay? Now, we'll get, you know the answer kind of already, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it. But we had two Bible stories today in the scripture readings that I'm sure none of you expected to hear. In fact, when I was reading the story about Job, you probably were thinking, what in the world is he reading that for? What does that have to do with Thanksgiving, okay? And I was reading the story about the rich young ruler. What's he reading that for? What's that have to do about Thanksgiving? It has everything to do with Thanksgiving. In one case, we had a person who was thankful. In another case, we had a person who was not thankful. One was poor, one was rich. Why the difference? And maybe, surprisingly, to some people anyway, the one who was thankful was the one who had lost everything. Right? Job? That was quite a day, wasn't it? Holy moly. One guy's given a report about these shepherds and these servants, and the next one comes in, gives another report, next one comes in, the third, fourth one comes in, finally says, all your kids are dead too. Oh my gosh, you and I would probably collapse. And yet, what did Job do after he went and put on mourning clothes and he went and shaved his head, which was a sign of extreme regret? It says he bowed down and worshiped and said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amazing. 
Here was a thankful man, even at a time of incredible grief and suffering. Just keep that in mind. I'll come back to the why in just a second. On the other hand, we have the account of the rich young ruler. When it says rich young ruler, he doesn't tell us specifically what he's a ruler of. He might have been a ruler of a synagogue, which would have meant he was a very important person in that particular town where he lived. Whatever it was, he was young. He had all kinds of wealth. He had power. He had his health. He had his entire life ahead of him. And yet, could he be thankful for it? No. Why not? Okay? What is the difference between these two men? And we can, we'll have other examples here in just a second, okay? But what is the difference between these two men in particular? And this is going to be the key to true thankfulness. And it's as true for these Job and that rich young ruler as it is for us. What can make a person truly thankful or what prevents a person from being truly thankful? And the one word that I will use to just narrow that down a little bit, trust. Trust. If you can be a trusting person, a person who trusts, and I'm not talking about trust your spouse, I'm not talking about trust your employer, I'm talking about trusting God. When you can trust God completely, then no matter what happens in a person's life, you can still be a thankful person. Job is perfect example of it. One horrific thing after another, but because his life was filled with faith, which is trust, all of these things still enabled him to bow down in worship and say, thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. On the other hand, the rich young ruler. He's not a thankful person. And he's not a thankful person because he doesn't trust. Exactly what you guys were saying when you were talking about how hard it is for the one who's comfortable and healthy and powerful, how hard it is for them to be thankful. This, this guy from the New Testament was exactly what you were talking about. He was comfortable in himself. He thought it was his. He depended upon his wealth. He did not trust in God. He did not. Oh, outwardly, outwardly, he might have been the ruler of the synagogue. But in his heart, there wasn't any trust. And Jesus proved it to him. Jesus proved it to him. He said, this is what you have to do. You want to inherit eternal life? Okay? You know, and the guy says, yeah. And I've kept all the commandments, by the way. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so Jesus just tells him, here's the proof that you don't have eternal life because you don't have the trust. Sell everything you got. Sell everything you got. Give it away. Then you'll have treasures in heaven. And then Jesus said, come follow me. He was offered the greatest gift that the world ever knows. The greatest gift that anyone will ever know. The opportunity to follow Christ in all of its fullness now and on to eternal life. That's what he wanted, right? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Here it was before him. Follow me and you will have eternal life. But he was not thankful that he got that opportunity. It says he turned around and walked away incredibly sad. I think the only person that was sadder at that moment was Jesus himself. It was a matter of trust. When there's trust, no matter what happens, there can be thankfulness. And there is thankfulness. And when there is no trust, it's just very hard to be thankful. Okay? Let's look at some other examples from the Scripture. Examples that we have from the Scripture tend to be people who were incredibly well-blessed, who were comfortable, who were well-off, and who were thankful, unlike the rich young ruler. Can you think of any? 
How about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? They were wealthy people. And they were some of Jesus' most dedicated followers, right? Lazarus, raised from the dead. Martha, you are the, the resurrection. You're the life. <sighs> Incredible. They had wealth, but they trusted Jesus. What about Zacchaeus? Remember Zacchaeus, right? I know the first thing you think about, he was short. <laughs> Get that song out of your mind. It's not the key thing. The key thing was he was incredibly wealthy. As a tax collector, he had more than anyone else. And yet, when he came to trust Jesus, when Jesus came and invited him also, just like he did that rich young ruler, he was ecstatic. And he himself said, I'm going to give away half of everything I have, and anyone I cheat, I'm going to give them five times as much as ever. He was so thankful. And it came through trust. Through trust. Regarding other examples, on the other hand, of people who are suffering, who have great difficulty, who are in pain, who are hurting emotionally, who have bad relationships, we have the example of Job as being someone who believes, but I don't think you probably have to go too far to think even in your own life of people that you've met who've had difficulties, who because of lack of trust in God, did all the kinds of things that you were saying. They get bitter, they get angry at God, they think there's no hope, and they can't be thankful. You see, what you have or what you don't have, the problems you have or the problems you don't have, don't make one bit of difference if you're thankful or not. The only thing that makes a difference is faith, is trust. Through trust, we can thank God in any and all circumstances. That Bible verse has been on the screen the entire time I've been preaching. Okay? This is the key one for tonight, for this Thanksgiving season. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When we have Jesus, when we trust in him, when we know very specifically and take to heart what he truly has done for us. Not the things that we think he should be doing for us, or the things that he's really slow on and not getting right in our lives, according to our way of thinking. But when we can think, Jesus has done all this for me, and we can look at that cross and we can see him suffering incredibly so that we could be the children of God and have the certainty of everlasting life, then you can be joyful always. Joyful. We've talked about that many times, right? Joyful. It's not the same as let's be happy and just go and party. This means to have a deep-seated contentment that I know that because God loves me, he gave his son for me, he will not forsake me, he will not leave me, everything is going to be okay, and I can meet these challenges, and it's going to be okay. That's the joy. Or on the other hand, when you got lots of stuff, and he's blessed you immensely, you can look at it and say, God, here's even more evidence Temporal evidence of what you have provided for me spiritually. If you gave Jesus to die for me, I know it's you who's given me all this stuff. And I will never, ever pat myself on the back for it and say, look what a great job I've done. I will be thankful and I will bow down before you and celebrate with great joy. Pray continually. Pray is the kind of a key deal here. Because prayer ultimately is all about what? Just use the same word that I've been using all along. Trust. If you don't trust, you don't pray. That's the deal. It's just how it goes. The only kind of prayers an untrusting person says is when someone else is leading them 
or when they just do something rote mechanically. But a person who trusts is the person that has a prayer life, that talks to God as a father when things are going well, when things are difficult. Pray continually. It's a sign of trust. And then, of course, give thanks in all circumstances. You see, that follows. That all follows. Then you can be thankful. When you get it right. When you get it right. When you, when you can trust in God, when you can uh, very specifically look at Jesus being, being your salvation and, and knowing that he has triumphed, he's conquered, he loves you, he's not going to leave you, oh, then you can give thanks in all circumstances. And that's the key thing. This is God's will for you. Can you imagine that? It's hard for us to even comprehend that. All this stuff God does for us individually by name. (laughs) If I had enough guts, I'd try to go around and list all your names. (laughs) Except my age would show and I wouldn't work. But it's God's will for you. Put your own name in there. It's God's will for you. That's how come we can be thankful people. Thankfulness springs from trust. It doesn't spring from things. We can go around our tables at Thanksgiving and say what you're thankful for. Whatever, that's nice. But it starts with trust. We're thankful for Jesus. Amen. And the peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We're going to confess our Christian faith by saying tonight the explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, Luther wrote three, as you know, and the first article is about the Father, the Father who provides us with all these things, with the things that we are blessed with in difficult times, in glorious times. Let's stand and say this confession together. I believe that God has made me and all creatures that he has given me, my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. And we pray. Heavenly Father, on this feast of thanksgiving, We pray that you will help us to truly understand the nature of thanksgiving, that it is about trust, it's about faith. It's not turkey, it's not football, it's not even family. It's Jesus. And we praise you that you have indeed revealed him to us, that you've established a faith inside of us that is able truly to give you thanks in all things at all times, in all circumstances. Even when things are difficult, even when things are hard, even when things are painful, we can still give you thanks because we know you are with us. You have come into this world, dear Jesus, to be our Savior, and you will not let anything separate us from you. And so that gives us the thankfulness of heart and the faith that indeed remains true to you. And then when we are blessed by so many, many good things, it's just another great sign of your love for us. Help us to always remember that, to be joyful always, to pray continually, to give thanks in all circumstances, for that truly is your will for us, and may it be done among us in its fullness. Lord God, we also pray tonight for people who are not truly thankful, who are not truly thankful because they don't trust, because of whatever reason. If they have a lot or they got nothing, we pray for them and ask that very specifically this year at this Thanksgiving time, their eyes will be open to see what it's all about, that they indeed will see you, dear God, as the source of all things, the giver of all good, the savior of all people. And by that, may you truly call them to be your children for eternal life. 
Lord God, we ask for your blessings today to also be with Barb Erickson. As she had surgery this past Monday, uh, we are grateful that at least some of the surgery was successful and, and she's doing a little better. But we pray that uh, the remaining difficulties will also be met as she continues to trust in you through the good work of the people at the Mayo Clinic. We also ask for your blessing to be with Larry Gilbert as he continues to receive radiation uh, for the tumors in his brain. We pray for Lyndon Luke as he continues to deal with cancer, for Dorothy Shepard as she continues to receive rehabilitation following surgery for a broken hip, for Michelle Griffiths as she is also making progress through therapy for her walking difficulties. We commend all people who are ill, who are in mental or emotional distress. For those who are in need, we commend them all into your hands, dear God, and help them not to become unthankful, but truly to trust you even in such difficulties. Lord God, finally, we again pray for Ashley Narvison as she'll be moving to Hawaii this coming Sunday. Uh, we truly pray that you will bless her, that you will lead her in paths that you have chosen for her that will be a delight to her and that will bring great glory to your name as well. We pray all this, dear Jesus, in your name. Amen. You may be seated. The offering is going to be received. During the offering, if you've not signed the Friendship Registers, please do that. And we are celebrating Holy Communion tonight, so check your communion attendance as well. And we do welcome all of our guests who are here tonight. Thank you very much, and a blessed Thanksgiving to you. Before I go on with uh, the communion service, I just wanted, I knew I was ending the sermon in the wrong way according to my plan, because, but I wasn't remembering what I wanted to say. So I, but what I was going to say is that tonight's theme, the emphasis that I was making here about how to be thankful was actually directly from the choir anthem for tonight. Uh, if you paid any attention to the music or to the words, it, that choir anthem said exactly what I was talking about. Look, just listen. Verse 1 said, Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, right? Where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. But then it said, Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. When I walk through the wilderness. When there's nothing. Blessed be your name. And then one other verse said this. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. That song was all about trusting God no matter what the circumstances. So Lori kind of suggested it by her choice of that hymn tonight. So thank you, Lori. It was your theme tonight, so... <laughs> Would you please stand for Holy Communion? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lie to magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying,
Father's Day of Thanksgiving, we offer you, O Lord, our praise for all you have done and continue to do for us. We especially thank you for giving us your only begotten Son, that through faith in him we might have life in his name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And please stand. And now may this body which was given for you and this blood which was shed for you strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. He is Lord and your strength. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart beats for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. 
the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thanksgiving to all of you. Go in peace.